program, The Bible Speaks, where we teach the Bible by subject and title. And this program is designed to help you understand your Bible better. I'll be your teacher today, Brother Sean. Reading for me is Brother Aaron. And the title of today's lesson is Jesus, the God of Humility. Jesus, the God of Humility. And in this lesson, we're going to learn the power of humility. We're going to learn that uh, uh, when you exercise humility, you are tapping into the power of God. Because uh, humility can be to our benefit, you know, whether it be uh, being humble with your brothers and your sisters, being humble in your prayers. Um, uh, humility, it can save lives. It also can heal lands. It can save your marriage. So we're going to learn that in this lesson. And uh, uh, your average person, they might even think humility is a sign of weakness. <laughs> but that's not the case because uh, uh, when, you, when you exercise humility, you might be tapping into the power of God. So we're going to start this lesson in Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter. We're going to start it in Deuteronomy 8. And this is when Moses just got through from telling Israel uh, all the commandments of God, all his statutes and his judgments. But the Lord wanted to show them something. And we're going to see what that was. We're going to start this in Deuteronomy 8. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Deuteronomy 8 and verse 1. When you get it, go ahead and read. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. Go ahead. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee. See, the Lord led Israel for 40 years in the wilderness to humble them. He wanted to show them something. Go ahead and read. And to prove thee, uh -huh. to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. See, sometimes the Lord will check you out. You might look up and see and find yourself in a situation where you might have to make a decision. Am I going to keep these commandments or not? See, the Lord approve you to see if you, if you, if you for real or not. But go, but go ahead and read. And he humbled thee. And he humbled thee. Pay attention. Go ahead. And suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know. See, the Lord had, uh, uh, led them in the wilderness for 40 years to humble the whole nation of Israel. He humbled them. And it was to show them one thing. What was that one thing? Go ahead and read. That he might make thee know that man does not live by bread only. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. That's the whole point. He wanted to humble Israel, to prove to them that man don't live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doeth man live. And when you put that in your mindset, that's humility right there. You know, because don't for one second think that you're doing this thing on your own. It is the Lord that's waking you up every day. It is the Lord that's providing that food for you to eat, for you and your family. But let's go a little further. Let's go to 2 Chronicles, the 7th chapter. Second Chronicles, the seventh chapter. We're dealing with humility. Second Chronicles 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 11. Second Chronicles, I'm sorry, Second Chronicles 7, I'm sorry. Second Chronicles 7. Second Chronicles 7, and we're going to pick this up at verse 11. Now, this is when Solomon had to build the temple of the Lord because David couldn't build it because it was too much blood on his hands. So he had to leave it up to Solomon, which was his son, to build the Lord's temple. But we're going to see what the Lord told uh, uh, Solomon. 2 Chronicles uh, 7 and verse 11. When you get it, go ahead and read. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord. And in his own house, he prosperously effected. Go ahead. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. See, the Lord chose this place and that place is Jerusalem. He chose that place and we're going to learn that. But the thing is, the Lord said he heard thy prayer. Remember, when you humble in your prayers, the Lord will hear you. 
And that's what we go learn. When you when you humble yourself in your prayers, that's when the Lord will hear your prayers. But go ahead and read. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, uh -huh. if my people which are called by my name. See, the Lord's name, one of the Lord's names is Israel. And this is who he's talking about. If his people which are called by his name, which is the name of Israel. Go ahead. Shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin. And I will hear their land, heal See, their he, land. Humility can heal lands. The Lord told his people if they turn from their wicked ways and seek him, and then he will hear their prayer and heal their land. But what you got to do first, you got to humble yourself. And that's what we're going to learn in this lesson. It's all about humility. It can go, uh, uh, you exercise humility, it is to your benefit. It is to your benefit. But go ahead and read, verse 15. Now mine eyes shall be open, and my ears attend to the prayer that is made in this place. See, now, and the Lord was talking about Jerusalem. His eyes and ears are going to be on this place forever, perpetually. That means forever. And if you come worship with us here at the Israel of God on, on the Sabbath day, before we start service, we stand and we face Jerusalem and open up in service. Because the Lord said his eyes and ears are going to be on this place forever. But let's go further. 2 Chronicles 34. 2 Chronicles, the 34th chapter. Let's move on over to 2 Chronicles 34. And see, we're going to start looking at examples of some of the, uh, 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 the kings of Israel and how they exercise humility and how humility saved them. And we're going to take a look at Josiah, King Josiah, and how humility saved him. And uh, uh, Josiah was the, uh, was the last uh, righteous king of Israel. Uh, 2 Chronicles 34, and we're going to pick this up at verse 1. 2 Chronicles 34 and verse 1. When you get it, go ahead and read. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem one and thirty years. Uh -huh. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the ways of David his father, and declined neither to the right hand nor to the left. See, this is Josiah, and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. Go ahead and read. For in the eighth year, eighth year of his reign, while he was yet young, he began to seek after the God of David, his father. And in the twelfth year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem from the high places and the groves and the carved images and the molten images. See, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem. What does that mean? That means he was cleansing them from all those false gods they were worshiping. When it says uh, the carved images and the molten images, he was breaking them down. He was purging Jerusalem, getting rid of all those false gods that uh, Israel was worshiping. Go ahead and read. And they break down the altars of Balaam. Balaam, those are those false gods. Go ahead and read. In his presence, and the images that were on high above them, he cut down. And the groves, and the carved images, and the molten images, he break in pieces and made dust of them, and straw and throw them upon the graves of them that had sacrificed unto them. That's right. See, when he broke them down and strode it upon the graves, that means he broke it into pieces and sprinkled the dust of those on the graves of those people who was worshiping those uh, false gods. This is how Josiah uh, uh, purged Jerusalem. But we're going to see how humility saved him. Uh, skip down to verse 15, uh, 14 and go ahead. Verse 14. And when, he, and when they bought out the money that was brought into the house of the Lord, Hilkiah the priest found a book of the law of the Lord given by Moses. See, they didn't found the book of the law of the Lord. Go ahead and read. And Hilkiah answered and said unto Shaphan, the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah delivered the book to Shaphan. That's right. Now skip down to verse 20 and go ahead. Verse 20. And the king commanded Hilkiah and Achaim, the son of Shaphan, and Abnon, the son of Micah, and Shaphan, the scribe, and Isaiah, Isaiah a servant of the king's, saying, Go inquire of the Lord for me and for them that are left in Israel and in Judah concerning the words of the book that is found. That's right. See, jo uh, Josiah, he sent to inquire of the Lord because he started reading that book of the law. And he wanted to know, is this thing real, what I'm reading? Let's go and find out. I'm going to send some people to inquire of the Lord. Go ahead and read. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is poured out upon us. See, that means Josiah was doing some reading. He was reading the book of the law. Go ahead and read. Because our fathers have not kept the word of the Lord to do after all that is written and in this book. And that's still today in, in, in the present time. We still not keeping the, uh, what's written in the book of the law. But that's why we teach the law. Go ahead and read. I'm sorry. Skip down to, uh, 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 no, go ahead. Verse 22. And Hilkiah and they that the king had appointed went into Hoda the prophetess. 
the wife of Shalom, the son of the, the Titva, the son of Hashrod, keeper of the wardrobe. Uh -huh. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college. And they had colleges back there, but pay attention. We finna get down to the nitty gritty. Now, uh, skip down to uh, verse 27. 27. Because thy heart was tender. Now Josiah's heart was tender. Go ahead and read. And thou didst humble thyself and before he God. He humbled himself before God. See, this is this is how Josiah was saved. Uh, uh, well, well, how humility saved jo uh, Josiah. He humbled himself. His heart was tender, and he humbled himself. Go ahead and read. When thou heardest his words against this place and against the habitation inhabitants thereof, he and humbled him thyself before me. That's right, and he humbled himself before thee. Go ahead and read. And didst rend thy clothes and weep before me. I have. Even heard thee also, saith the Lord. That's right. See, when you humble yourself in prayer, the Lord is going to hear your prayers. This is another example of that. Go ahead and read. Behold, I will gather thee to thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered to thy grave in peace. That's right. See, this is why, this is the, the, the reward he had for, for being humble. He said, you will be, uh, uh, you will go to your grave in peace. And what else? Neither shall thine eyes see all the evil that I will bring upon this place. Neither shall your eyes see the evil that he's going to bring upon this place. Why? Because his heart was tender, and he humbled thyself to the Lord in his prayer. Keep reading. And upon the inhabitants of the same. Yes. So they brought the king word again. And they brought the king word again. But humility, uh, 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 the power of humility uh, saved Josiah. He wasn't going to see the evil that the Lord was going to pour upon that place because he humbled himself. That's the power of humility. That's the saving part of humility. And it can, it's still good to this day. Let's go further. Let's go to Job, the 22nd chapter. Job, the 22nd chapter. And we're just taking a, we're just taking a look at examples of humility. It is powerful. Don't for one second think that humility is weakness. Because it's, it's the, world may think, uh, the world may have you thinking that humility is weakness. But humility is the power of God. Because when the Lord came in the flesh, he had to put on that humility. And we're going to read about that. He was, he, was, uh, he was spit on. He was slapped. He was whipped. They were throwing tomatoes, everything at the Lord. He had to put on that humility. That is the power of God. It is not weakness. It's one of the strongest traits you can have as a servant of God. Job 22. Job 22, and we're going to pick it up at verse 23. Job 22, and we're going to pick it up at verse 23. When you get it, go ahead and read. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Uh -huh. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacle. That's right. So you just got to put that sin away. That's all. Put it away. That's what we're talking about. Go ahead and read. Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust, and the gold of the ophir as the stones of the brooks. Go ahead. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. That's right. See, the Lord going to raise you up. But go ahead and read. For then shalt thou have thy, thy delight in the Almighty and shall lift up thy face unto God. Go ahead. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him. Again, once you humble yourself in your prayers, then you lift yourself up to God, and what's going to happen? Go ahead and read. And he shall hear thee. He's going to hear you once you humble yourself. That's the power of humility. The Lord will hear you because he knows you're sincere when you, when you humble yourself. Go ahead and read. And thou shalt pray thy, pay thy vow. Uh-huh. Thou shalt also decree a thing. Yes. And it shall be established unto thee. And the light shall shine upon thy ways. Go ahead and read. When men are cast down, then when shall... When men are cast down, go ahead. When men are cast down, then sh thou shalt say, there is lifting up. That's right, because you're going to humble yourself. It's going to be lifting up in the Lord. Let the Lord lift you up. Go ahead and read. And he shall save the humble person. He's going to save who? The humble person. The humble person. It's all about humility. You are putting on one of the fruits of the Spirit. Humility. is power in humility. Let's go to Isaiah, the 38th chapter. Isaiah 38. We see these examples of humility. It's all over the book. It is a benefit. When you exercise humility, it is a benefit. You can gain from it, but you got to do it sincerely. And that's what we're showing you today. Sincerely. Isaiah 38, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Now, we're going to take a look. We looked at uh, how humility uh, saved Josiah. Now we're going to look at Hezekiah, how humility saved Hezekiah's life. Isaiah, the 38th chapter, and pick it up at verse 1. When you get it, go ahead and read. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. Now, Hezekiah was sick unto death. So nowadays, in the, in the present time, that might be your, your, your average uh, cancer patient or diabetic 
They could be sick unto death. Or uh, uh, COVID-19 could be sick unto death. Go ahead and read. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Now, those are, that's some strong words, especially when they're coming from the Lord. He told him, get your house in order, because you're about to die and not live. That's something, that's something to think about. That's some strong words, especially when it's coming from the Lord. Go ahead and read. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall. I wonder why he turned his face toward the wall. Maybe he was facing that place that the Lord said he, his eyes and ears are going to be on. Go ahead and read. And prayed unto the Lord. He prayed to the Lord. Go ahead. And said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. See, now, now Hezekiah is pleading to the Lord in his prayer. Go ahead. And have done that which is good in thy sight. Uh-huh. And Hezekiah wept sore. See, he wept sore. The books say he wept sore. He shed tears. He humbled himself. That's humility. He was praying to the Lord and he wept sore. He was putting on that. He was exercising humility. And what did the Lord do? Go ahead and read. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying. I want to make sure y'all understand this. This is the word of the Lord. Ain't nobody else saying this. This is the word of the Lord. Go ahead and read. Go and say to Hezekiah, uh -huh. thus saith the Lord. Thus said who? The Lord. Thus said the Lord. Go ahead and read. The God of David, thy father. Uh -huh. I have heard thy prayer. See, when you humble yourself, he going to hear your prayer. You got to humble yourself. Go ahead and read. I have seen thy tears. He seen those tears. He knew you were sincere. Go ahead. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. I'm going to add it to your days 15 years because you put on humility. That's the power. That's how humility can save your life. It added 15 years unto Hezekiah's life. It's the power of God. Jesus is the God of humility. And when he came in the flesh, he showed us an example of that. But we're going to get to it. But you see that? It's like, imagine a doctor telling you, uh, 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 you're going to die at a certain, you know, you only got a certain amount of uh, time to live. And then you, you pray unto the Lord and the doctor come back in the room and say, well, we just, we just found out you're going you're gonna to live another 15 years. That's strictly from God. It's the power of God. Because he is the God of humility. This is Jesus. He is the God of humility. Let's go to um, Second Chronicles. Let's go back to 2 Chronicles, the 33rd chapter. 2 Chronicles 33. But well, we see this humility uh, um, is it, so, it's so much bigger than, but for time's sake, we, we got we to shorten it down. But humility is all over the book. This is one of the strongest traits you can have. When you put on humility, you are exercising the power of God. 2 Chronicles 33. Uh, 2 Chronicles 33, and let's pick it up at verse 1. Now, we read about Josiah. We read about Hezekiah. Humility saved these guys. Now, let's read about Manasseh. <laughs> and once you do, uh, uh, if you read about Manasseh on your own, you're going to see Manasseh, he was wicked. This brother has some issues. But let's read and see if, 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 uh, and see if the Lord cast him away. Uh, 2 Chronicles 33, and let's pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem. See, we're reading about all these kings of Israel, and we see how humility saved them. And it's the same for us. Go ahead and read. But, but did that was, which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Now, ain't that the complete opposite of what Josiah was doing? The book said Josiah did what was right in the sight of the Lord. But Manasseh, he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. This brother was wicked. We're going to read about it. Go ahead and read. Like unto the... Uh, abominations of the heathen. And heathen means nations, people. So he was doing like, like the other nations. He was uh, 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 doing those abominations like the other, uh, uh, the other nations was doing. Go ahead and read. Whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. Uh -huh. For he built again the high places of which Hezekiah, his father, had broken down. Those high places are those false gods again. We read about Josiah breaking those down. His brother then brought them back up. Go ahead and read. And he reared up altars for Balaam. Balaam, false gods. Remember, these, he is serving a false god. This is evil in the sight of the Lord. The commandments say you should have no other gods before me. Go ahead and read. And made groves and worship all the hosts of heaven and serve them. This brother was worshiping and serving graven images. This is evil in the sight of the Lord. But did the Lord cast him away? Did the Lord forget about him? Go ahead and read. Also, he built altars in the house of the Lord. This brother then built altars in the house of the Lord. Go ahead. Whereof the Lord has said, in Jerusalem shall my name be forever. We read that when uh, Solomon was building that temple. Go ahead and read. 
and he built altars for all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. Go ahead. And he caused his children to pass through the fire uh -huh. in the valley of the son of Hinnom. Go ahead. Also, he observed time. This brother observed time. We are reading about all this evil that Manasseh was doing in the sight of the Lord. Go ahead and read. Use enchantments. This brother was using enchantments. Go ahead. And use witchcraft. Oh, my goodness. This and brother was doing witchcraft. Go ahead and read. And dwelt with a familiar spirit. And familiar spirits are devils, brothers and sisters. Devils. In another lesson, we can show you that. Go ahead and read. And with wizards. This brother was doing all kind of evil. Keep reading. He wrought much evil in the, in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. This brother wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. But did the Lord cast him away? Did the Lord give up on him? Did the Lord forget him? Skip down to verse 9 and go ahead. So Manasseh made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err. He made them err because they was worshiping these false gods. He made them do that. That's wickedness. Go ahead. And to do worse than the heathen. And they did worse than the other nations. Go ahead. Whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. Uh-huh. And the Lord spake to Manasseh and to his people, but they would not hearken. And that's just like today. The Lord is speaking to us through this book that we read. Ain't nobody listening. Ain't nobody hearkening. It's still to this day. Go ahead and read. What for the Lord brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of Zari, Assyria, which took Manasseh among the thorns and bound them, him with feathers and carried him to Babylon. That's right. See, the Lord had Manasseh captured. But Manasseh did all this evil. Now let's see what humility did for Manasseh. Go ahead and read. And when he was in affliction. Now remember, even, even today, when Israel is in affliction, that's when we want to call on the name of the Lord. We wait to be in some trouble. Now we want to call on the name of the Lord. But see, if you humble and you sincere about it, the Lord just might hear you. Go ahead and read. He bes and he besought the Lord his God uh -huh. and humbled himself what greatly. What did he do? And humbled himself see, greatly. Manasseh humbled himself greatly before the uh, eyes of the Lord. After all this evil he was doing, he prayed to the Lord, but he humbled himself greatly. Go ahead and read. And, and he humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. Uh huh. And prayed unto him. See, first, what did he do first? He had to humble himself, and then he prayed to the Lord. Go ahead. And he was entreated of him. Uh-huh. And, he, and heard his supplication. Yes. And brought him again to Jerusalem to his kingdom. Go ahead. His kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord was God because the Lord uh, restored his kingdom right back to him. After all that evil he was doing, he humbled himself and he prayed, and the Lord did not forget him. After all that wickedness, the Lord is still, his, his mercy endure forever. And as long as you're sincere about it, the Lord will hear your prayers and you humble yourself. That's the power of humility. And it's still good to this day. Anything the Lord tells you is still good to this day. Let's go to Psalms, the ninth chapter. Psalms 9. But these examples of humility are huge. The Bible says, uh, that things written are for our ammunition to keep us grounded. Psalms 9, and we're going to read uh, Psalms 9, and we're going to pick it up at verse 7. Psalms, the ninth chapter, and we're going to pick this up at verse 7. Humility is strong, people. It is one of the strongest traits you can have. Psalms 9 and verse 7, when you get it, go ahead and read. But the Lord shall endure forever. Yes, he will. He hath prepared his throne for judgment. Go ahead. And he shall judge the world in righteousness. That's what he going to do. He going to judge the whole world in righteousness. And that's what we got. If we Look, the book says you can judge, but you got to judge righteously. Don't make, just, you can't just be judging nobody. Him without sin shall cast the first stone. But you can warn, because that is the watchman's job, to warn the people. Go ahead and read. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. Yes. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed. Uh-huh. A refuge in times of trouble. Now, wasn't Manasseh in trouble? Manasseh knew. He said, oh, man, I, I'm afflicted. They didn't capture me. Let me pray to the Lord. Let me humble myself. And he's going to be a refuge in time of trouble to this day. Keep reading. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. Uh-huh. For thou, Lord, has not forsaken them that seek thee. That's right. The Lord ain't forsaken them that seek thee. Didn't Manasseh pray to the Lord? And the Lord said, I heard your prayer because you humbled yourself. And you can go into uh, Psalms, the 37th chapter, and read, David said, I have been uh, old, and but yet I am young. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Because the Lord is going to be there. He's going to save the humble person. Did we read that? Go ahead and read. Sing praises to the Lord, which dwelleth in Zion. 
the quilla among the people his doing. Uh -huh. When he maketh inquisition for blood, Go ahead. he remembereth them. He forgetteth not the cry of the humble. He forget not the cry of who? Humble. The humble. It is about humility, people. He didn't forget the cry of Manasseh. He didn't forget the cry of Josiah. He didn't forget the cry of Hezekiah because they humbled themselves. And the Lord will hear you. Isaiah 57. Isaiah the 57 chapter. I hope we're getting some understanding about this. Humility is not weakness. Let's, don't let the world think and tell you that humility is weakness. Oh, oh man, I, uh, you think uh, you put on humility and everybody think you, you being a uh, bully or, or, or you weak. No, you might be the strongest man in the room or strongest woman in the room when you put on that humility. You are exercising the power of God. Whether it be in your prayers, whether it be amongst your brothers and sisters, humility, you are the strongest person when you're putting on humility. Isaiah 57. Isaiah 57, <clears throat> and we're going to pick this up at verse 14. Isaiah 57, when you get it, verse 14, go ahead and read. And shall say, cast ye up, cast ye up, prepare the way, take up the stumbling block out of the way of my people. Go ahead. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. Now we're talking about Jesus, because Jesus' name is holy. Go ahead and read. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. This is the son saying that he dwells with the father. You got two. The son dwells with the father who is also of a humble and contrite spirit. Go ahead and read. To revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite one. That's right. See, and contrite is pretty much the same as humble. Contrite means uh, feeling remorse or feeling uh, regret about something, about guilt. So it's the same thing as humility. So the father has a humble and contrite spirit. The son dwells with him. He has a humble and contrite spirit. And if we call ourselves servants of God and we want to walk with Christ, we have to be humble and put on a humble and contrite spirit. That's what we got to do. Did you finish that? Okay, let's go to uh, Matthew, the 18th chapter. Let's go to Matthew, the 18th chapter. You see, the Father has a humble and contrite spirit. Jesus said, I dwell with him. He didn't say, I dwell with them. It's two in the Godhead. You got the Father and you got the Son. He dwells with him. Matthew 18. They both are on one accord, humble and contrite spirit. And that's what we got to put on. Like Philippians, the second chapter tells you, uh, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Who put on the form of a servant. It was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Matthew's 18. Now let's go, let's go in and see uh, when Jesus came in the flesh now, how he put on humility. Because these things are for our example. Not only did he show us in the Old Testament that when you humble yourself, you, you, uh, uh, he will hear you. But he came in the flesh and showed us examples of him doing it. Matthew 18, and let's pick this up at verse 1. Matthew 18 and verse 1, when you get it, go ahead and read. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? That is a great question. I would have asked that if I was around Jesus. Jesus, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? That is a good question. Go ahead and read. And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. Go ahead. And said, Verily I, uh, verily I say unto you, except ye be co converted and become as little children, ye should not enter into the kingdom of heaven. See, he grabbed a little child and set the child in the midst of them. And say, you got to be converted like these little ones. Why did he chose a child? Because a child is innocent and a child is humble. Because they are babies. They don't even know nothing yet. So you got to convert yourself to be as humble as a little child if you want to make it in the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead and read. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as the little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. That's the same that is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. If you humble yourself as a little child, just like you see the kids playing, they're running around, they're so innocent, free of, of evil. That's how you got to put on that humility. Go ahead and read. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. Go ahead. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that were drowned in the depth of the sea. See, now that's, 
Now that goes out to all the uh, uh, the pedophiles out there or the, or, the, or the rapists. You better be careful. You touching these little kids, the Lord says it's better for you to have a millstone around your neck and drop into the depths of the sea than to come up on these kids like that. Go ahead and read. Seven. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come. That's right. The offenses are going to come because when you're dealing with the true uh, and living God, uh, uh, Christianity today is not the Christian, uh, uh, it's not the Christianity of the Bible. So when you're dealing with this true word, you might offend some people because uh, you're doing what thus said the Lord and they're not. You keeping the Sabbath day, but they go to church every Sunday, worshiping sunrise service and they don't even know. But when you tell them that, they might get offended and offenses are going to come. Go ahead and read. But woe to the man that by whom the offense cometh. Uh -huh. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. See, the Lord say, if, if, if your hand or your foot offend thee, cut it off. In other words, if, if, if you got something that's going to prevent you from getting to the kingdom of God on the good side of the kingdom, you better cut it off. Because if your hand offend you, if you can't stop putting your hands on, on people, cut it off. Better to go into life, eternal life, with one arm than to go into hellfire with two. Keep reading. Ten. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. That's right. And the angels are right there with the Father. They're right there. They're telling them everything that you're doing. So you be careful with that. But you got to humble yourself. Let's go a little further. Let's go to um, John the 13th chapter. Let's go to John the 13th chapter. But you got to humble yourself as the little ones. Just like a little child if you want to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. This is the power of humility, people. It might even get you eternal life. I want to live forever. John 13. John 13, and we're going to pick this up at verse 1. John 13. Now, we're going to take a look at another, uh, uh, at another example of how Jesus showed us humility in the flesh when he came in the flesh. God in the flesh. John 13 and verse 1. When you get it, go ahead and read. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father. See, Jesus knew he was going to die. He knew he had to come and die for us. Go ahead and read. Having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Uh -huh. And supper began being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. See, this is what we're going to call uh, learning something on the way to learning something. This is what, these are little things that you got to pay attention to. See, the devil can't make you do anything. But what did he do? He attacked Judas's heart, which is his mind. He came into his heart and his mind. He'll get into your mind, and then it's going to be up to you to make a choice. Go ahead and read. Three, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he was come from God and went to God. Uh -huh. He rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. Go ahead and read. After that, he poured water into a, a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. See, Jesus, we're talking about God in the flesh. He took a towel and started to clean and wipe the disciples' feet. This is humility. We talk about the creator of all things. Got on his knees and started wiping and washing the disciples' feet. That's the humility we got to put on. But go ahead and read. Six. Then come of he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, does thou wash my feet? He said, you wash my feet, Lord? Go ahead and read. Jesus answered and said unto him, what I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. That's right. See, they didn't understand what Jesus was doing while he was washing their feet. But he say you will understand later. Because if you go to uh, uh, Romans, the 10th chapter, uh, the book say, how beautiful are the feet of those that bring the gospel of peace and glad tidings. Because it's about the path you walk on. He was washing their feet so, that, so they could understand it's about walking on that path of righteousness. That's the uh, example he was showing us uh, of washing the feet. Keep reading. Hey, Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou, sh thou hast no part with me. That's right. And that washing represents the washing of the word as well. See, once you wash that word, I mean, once you get that washing of the word, then you can take part with Jesus. Because uh, 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 you, to, in order to be born again, you got to be born of the spirit first. Born of the water and then born of the spirit. Got to be born of the water and then born of the spirit. 
Go ahead and read. Nine. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Peter said, well, just wash me all, Lord, because I'm filthy. Go ahead and read. Jesus saith unto him, he that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean ever with. And ye are clean, but not all. He was talking about Judas, because he knew Judas was going to uh, uh, betray him. Keep reading. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore he said, ye are not all clean. He knew that. Keep reading. So after he had washed their feet, he had taken his garments and was set down again. He said unto them, know ye what I have done unto you? That's right. He you? asked him a question. Jesus asked him a question. Do you know what I have done to you? Go ahead and read. Ye call me master and lord, and ye, shall, and ye say well. For so I am. Uh -huh. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye you also ought to wash another's That's feet. That's the example he was showing us. That's the example Jesus was showing us. If I'm going to wash your feet, you all should do it to one another. That's the humility that you got to have with your brothers and your sisters. You got to wash each other's feet. If I'm doing it, I'm showing you all that you need to do it to each other. Because love is what the commandments are all about. The first four, loving your God. The other six, loving your neighbor. Keep reading. 15. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done, done to you. That's right. It was an example that we should do to each other what the Lord was doing to his disciples. They're washing their feet, being humble. Uh, uh, is that it? Is that the end of that? Go ahead and read. 16, verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. Uh -huh. Neither be that is sent greater than he that sent him. Go ahead. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. That's right, because once you put on that mindset, let this mind be in you, you understand the whole principle. You understand the big picture. We all trying to become God. Yeah, I wash my brother and my sister's feet. Because I know the big picture. I know that the Lord is watching. And I'm putting on that humility, that power, which is the power of God. Luke 18, Luke 18, Luke 18, but this humility is all over the book. We didn't deal with the Old Testament. We are dealing with the New Testament. We see, just like it says in Isaiah, uh, the eighth chapter, to the law and to the testimony. You got to have both books. If you don't speak according to this, there is no light in you. And light represents truth. So if you're not speaking, if you're an Old Testament scholar, and don't deal with the New Testament, it might be not, uh, there's no light in you. If you're a New Testament Christian and you don't deal with the Old Testament, how can you understand the book? There is no light in you. You got to have both. Where we at? Luke 18. We at Luke 18, and we're going to pick this up at uh, verse 9. Luke 18 and verse 9. Here's another example of humility. Here's another example of humility. Luke 18 and 9. When you get it, go ahead and read. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Now, these is it's an example of two people. They uh uh they they going they gonna pray to the Lord, and we're gonna see the difference in the two prayers. Go ahead and read. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a pelican, a publican. Now we got a Pharisee and we got a publican. Pay attention. Go ahead and read. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself: God, I thank thee that I am not as others, men, other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. See, you got this Pharisee standing and praying before God, but he's trying to put himself better than others. He's trying to point the finger. I'm glad I'm not like this guy, Lord. I'm glad I'm better than this guy. Is that humility? No. Go ahead and read. I fast twice in the week. This brother trying to put himself on high. I fast twice in a week, Lord. Go ahead and read. I give tithes of all that I possess. He bragging about what he doing, but the you don't have to tell the Lord that. The Lord sees it all. Go ahead and read. And, and the publican standing afar. Now pay attention to this publican who was praying. Go ahead. Would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. That's right. See, the publican said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. He wasn't putting nobody else in his prayers. He was putting on that humility. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Why this, uh, this Pharisee, he trying to put himself on high. Oh, I'm not like this. I give tithes of all. Go ahead and read. 14. I tell you, the man went down to, the, to his house justified rather than the other. Uh -huh. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be obeyed. That's right. See, when you exalt yourself, you're going to be abased. And abased means to uh, uh, 
degrade or be uh, be belittled. So you're going to be uh, belittled in the Lord's eyes if you try to exalt yourself. You got to let the Lord exalt you. Go ahead and read. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. He that what? Humbleth himself. See, he that humbleth himself, he going to be exalted. He's the one that the Lord is going to lift up. And you let the Lord do it. Not on your time, on the Lord's time. It's all about exercising humility. This is the power of it. Let's go a little further. Let's go to uh, Ezekiel, the 18th chapter. Ezekiel 18. I hope we're getting some understanding, people. Humility is big. It is so much power in humility. Ezekiel 18. It is so much power. Ezekiel 18, and we're going to pick this up at verse 25. Now, this is the chapter of uh, uh, what I call a chapter of repentance because this is examples of how you can repent to the Lord. Ezekiel 18 and verse 25. When you get it, go ahead and read. Yet ye say, the way of the Lord is not equal. Hear now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal? Are not your ways unequal? See, Israel always want to complain about something. They're telling the Lord his ways ain't equal. But the Lord is telling them, my ways are equal, your ways are unequal. Go ahead and read. When a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and dieth in them for his iniquity that he wish he hath done, shall he die. See, pay attention. When a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness and then you start doing wickedness, remember the Lord can send that death angel on you while you're doing that wickedness. And if you die while you're doing that wickedness, you're going to be judged accordingly. Go ahead and read. 27. Again, when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness. Now pay attention. Now this is the wicked man. When the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness. Go ahead. He, I mean that he hath committed and doth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. And we talk about eternal life. So when the wicked man, you turn away from your wickedness. That's repentance. That's true with repentance. When the wicked man turns away from his wickedness and do what is lawful and right, he will save his soul alive. We're talking about forever, eternal life, on the good side of the kingdom. That's humility when a wicked man turns away from it. But why did he turn away? Go ahead and read. 28, because he considered it. Because he did what? Consider it. Because he considered it. He humbled himself. The wicked man humbled himself and turned away from the He knew and understood, I got to stop this. And once you do that, you may save your soul alive. You might just gain eternal life. Keep reading. And turneth away from all his transgressions that he hath committed, he shall surely live and shall not die. We're talking eternal life, brothers and sisters. He shall live on the good side of the kingdom. Let's, let's move. Let's, uh, let's go to Luke, the seventh chapter. Let's go to Luke, the seventh chapter. Luke 7. Jesus is the God of humility, and we're reading about it right now. Luke 7, and let's pick it up at verse 36. Luke 7, and let's pick this up at verse 36. Luke 7 and 36. When you get it, go ahead and read. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat up with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to, to meet. Go ahead. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment. That's right, go ahead. And stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now you see this, uh, this, this, um, this, uh, this woman, she was a sinner, but she humbled herself when she seen him, when she seen Jesus, she started crying at his feet and wiping, washing his feet with her tears and the hairs of her head. Now that's humble. That's humility. Go ahead and read. Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who what, what manner of woman this is that, that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. See, now this Pharisee, pay attention now. This is another way, uh, this is another thing of learning something on your way to learning something. See, when Jesus came in the flesh, he used that God power while he was in the flesh. The Pharisee was talking within himself, and the Lord still heard him. Go ahead and read. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. Uh -huh. And he saith, Master, say on. Go ahead. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. Now he's going to use this parable to show you of the power of humility. Go ahead. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. So you got two debtors, one owed 500 and the other owed 50. Go ahead and read. 
And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. And the, and, and the creditor said, you know what? I forgive both of you. You owe me 500, but you owe me 50. I forgive both of you. Go ahead. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Now, which one of those debtors are going to love the creditor most? The one that owed 500 or the one that owed 50? Go ahead and read. Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. That's right. That's the one that owed 500. He's going to be the one that's happy. Like, oh, man, I ain't got to pay that whole 500. Go ahead and read. And he said unto him, thou hast rightly judged. You have rightly judged. But he compared that to the woman. Go ahead and read. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, uh -huh. See, is thou this woman? I have entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Now, this woman, she, had, she was a sinner, but she humbled herself and cried at the Lord's feet and wiped, her, uh, uh, wiped his feet with the tears of her eyes and then wiped them with the hairs on her head. This is humility, and it saved this sinner. Go ahead and read. Thou gave this me no kiss, uh -huh. but this woman since the time I came in have not ceased to kiss my feet. She ain't stopped kissing Jesus' feet since he's been in there. Go ahead and read. My head with oil that thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Go ahead. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many. Her sins which are many. Just like the, the debtor owed 500, he owed many, but he was forgiven. And just like this woman, she was a sinner, and her sins are many. Read that one more time. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many. Her sins which are many, go ahead. Are forgiven. Are forgiven. Why? Because she humbled herself and wiped the, tear, wiped, wiped the uh, Lord's feet with her tears and wiped them with the hairs on her head. She humbled herself, and the Lord forgave her sin. Go ahead and read. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. Look, if you love if little, you're going to forgive little. I mean, if, if you forgive little, the same love is little. That's why when you put on, when you exercise humility, you are exercising the power of God. And the Lord sees that, and he will reward you accordingly. It is power in humility. It is not weakness. Keep reading. 48. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. Thy sins are forgiven. Can you imagine the Lord telling you your sins, are for, your sins which are many, are forgiven? You might as well, I could just, <laughs> Lord, tell me that. What, am I, what I got to live for now? My sin's forgiven. I'm going to make it in that kingdom. Go ahead and read. 49. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, who is this that forgiveth sins also? They say, who is this? And the Pharisees always tried to understand. Jesus kept telling them. Well, go ahead and read. And he said it's the woman, they, thy, thy faith has saved thee. Thy faith has saved thee. Go in Let's, peace. Go in peace. Your faith has saved you. Because she humbled herself. Go ahead. Let's go to James, the fourth chapter. James 4. But we see this humility is powerful. It can even, you might gain eternal life. James, the fourth chapter. <clears throat> James 4, and we're going to pick this up at verse 6. James 4 and verse 6. When you get it, go ahead and read. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud. Uh-huh but give of grace unto the humble. He resists the proud, but he give grace unto the humble. You see that? Because remember, we read about the publican and the, uh, and the Pharisee, the two prayers. He say, you lift up yourself, you try to exalt yourself, you're going to be abased. So the Lord, uh, uh, he resisteth the proud, but give of grace unto the humble. Go ahead and read. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Uh -huh. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That's him. right. You resist the devil, he going to flee. Rebuke him in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and read. Draw nigh to God. And he will draw nigh to you. That's right. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and pur purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Go ahead. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Go ahead. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. One more time. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. You got to humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Just like all these examples we've been, we've been reading about today. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. And he going to give grace unto the humble. Go ahead and read. And he shall lift you up. And he going to lift you up. Let the Lord do the lifting. Let the Lord do the exalting. Don't try to exalt yourself because pride, the book say pride, comes before the fall. And the father of the prideful is Satan the devil, brothers and sisters. Let's move. Let's go to 1 Peter, the fifth chapter. Turn over to 1 Peter, the fifth chapter. It's the next book. 1 Peter, the fifth chapter. We're going to pick this up at verse 5. 
First Peter 5 and verse 5. Go ahead and read. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you to subject, be subject one to another and be clothed with hum humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. God resisteth the proud and give him grace to the humble. And you got to be clothed with humility. You got to put on that humility. You got to wear it like it's your work uniform and exercise that. Go ahead and read. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Read that one more time. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Man, we look in this world now. I see so much pride going on. I see so much puffed up. You better humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. It don't matter who you are, what position you in. Because remember, the only reason you in that position is because the Lord gave you that. The Lord put you in that position, whatever it is. Whether you be the president of the United States, the Lord say he set up kings and he take them down kings. Whether you be a... a, a a usher in the church, whether you be a teacher in the church, you better humble yourself because the Lord put you in that situation. You didn't do it. The Lord did. Go ahead and read. That he may exalt you in due time. He going to lift you up in due time. Let's go to Micah the sixth chapter. We almost out of here. Let's go to Micah the sixth chapter. Micah six. Humility is strong and powerful and it's something we need to exercise every day. Micah the sixth chapter. And let's pick this up at verse... 8, Micah 6 and verse 8. This is what the Lord is going to require of you. Go ahead and read. He has showed thee, O man, what is good. The Lord showed uh, thee, O man, what is good. Go ahead. And what does the Lord require of thee? What is it? But to do justly uh -huh. and to love mercy. Yes. And to walk humbly with thy God. And to do what? Walk humbly with thy God. You got to walk humbly with the Lord because he is watching. The angels do always behold the face of the Father. He reporting everything you do. You put on that humility, you are putting on the power of God. Proverbs 15. Proverbs 15. Proverbs, the 15th chapter. This is powerful, people. This is power. Jesus is the God of humility. Proverbs 15 and read verse 31. When you get it, go ahead and read. The ear that hears the reproof of life abideth among the wise. Go ahead. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul. If you refuse the instruction of the Lord, you despise your own soul. Because the Lord told you, get knowledge and wisdom, but with all your getting, get understanding. Go ahead and read. But he that heareth reproof, get of understanding. That's right. Once you get the, uh, uh, once you uh, uh, listen to the instruction of the Lord, you're going to gain understanding. Go ahead. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. Keep reading. And before honor is humility. Before honor is humility. That's something you got to remember. Before honor is humility. Humble yourself so that the Lord can exalt you in due time. In his time, not yours. Let's go to Romans, the 14th chapter. Let's go to Romans, the 14th chapter. This humility is all over the book, brothers and sisters. And there's so much more dealing with it that we couldn't fit it in the time frame that we have. Romans, the 14th chapter, and putting on humility is not weakness. It is not weakness. You might just be tapping into the power of God, to the power of Jesus. It is strong. Romans 14, and let's pick it up at verse 7. Romans 14 and 7, when you get it, go ahead and read. For none of, for none of us liveth to himself. Now, this is what we got to remember. We got to pay attention to this. I don't care where you at in life, whether you poor or rich. None of us live unto ourselves. Go ahead. And no man dieth to himself. And no man dieth unto himself. Go ahead and read. For whether we live, whether we live, we live unto the Lord. We live unto the Lord. This is the Lord that's controlling these things. Go ahead and read. And whether we die, whether we die, we die unto the Lord. It's because the Lord gave a command. Go ahead and read. Whether we live, therefore, uh -huh. or die, we are the Lord. Whether you live or whether you die, we are the Lord's. You better put on that humility and realize we ain't controlling this thing. It is the Lord that's controlling it. And once you get that understanding, then you realize to put on humility. 
because it is the Lord that is in control. He could give a commandment to stop your breath just like that. Let's go to uh, let's go to Job, the twenty-second chapter. Job, the twenty-second chapter. So I want I want us to remember this. Job, the twenty-second chapter. Job twenty-two. And we're going to pick it up at verse 23. Job 22. And we're going to pick it up at verse 23. Because I want us to remember this. Go ahead and read. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Remember, if you return to the Almighty, you're going to be built up. He's the one that's going to exalt you in due time. Remember that. Go ahead and read. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacle. Put it away. Put it away. Go ahead and read. Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust, uh -huh. and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brooks. Uh -huh. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. Go ahead and read. For then shalt thou have the, thy delight in the Almighty, and shalt lift up thy face unto God. Uh -huh. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee, and thou shalt pray thy vows. Go ahead. Thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. Go ahead and read. When men are cast down, then shall thou say, there is lifting up, and he shall save the humble person. Yes, you remember that. When men are cast down, but you remain humble, the Lord is going to lift you up, and he's going to save the humble person. That's what this whole lesson was about, humility. Jesus, the God of humility. Read that last verse, verse 30. He shall deliver the island of the innocent, yes. and it is delivered by the pureness of thine hand. That's right. It is delivered by the pureness of the Lord's hand. 